we are going to enter the world of ultraviolet light but since Newton we know that light is very important and from light we know all of the electromagnetic spectrum Johann Goethe gave us the meaning between the shadows and light the shadows that border is all the colors then we have Herschel, which in 1800 tried to measure the different temperatures of colors and instead he found out that where there was no color from the rainbow the temperature would go up two degrees which was infrared or the temperature would go down two degrees which was ultraviolet so that that has given us the whole electromagnetic spectrum but now it's time to enter and to find out how much ultraviolet is responsible of creating life and photosynthesis this has been unknown or we have had fear of it and we will learn to use ultraviolet in such different ways su such healing ways because without ultraviolet there's no life and ultraviolet inside the water creates all of life ultraviolet also cleans up all the atmosphere and cleans up everything that we need in our ambient place around us. Now we're going to see how ultraviolet is used for therapy and for healing almost cancer. With the dialysis of the blood we can heal leukemia, boosts up immune system, we can heal HIV, we can heal all very difficult problems. We do not need chemotherapy. 50 cc's of blood are then withdrawn and that blood passes through a special tubing in through a special chamber that has an ultraviolet light that radiates the blood with a very special frequency. When 50 cc's of the blood is collected in the syringe on the other side of the chamber, the process is reversed and the blood is just slowly re-injected back into the patient. The entire procedure only takes minutes as you're about to see in the attached video. But that 50 cc's of blood, the blood cells themselves, take on special qualities and their immune abilities are increased and they become like little Pac-Men that go around the body and, and help the body destroy germs. Well, think of everything that can be solved with this process. I mean, we use it in our office all the time for the common cold. It's great for combating viruses. It's great for combating influenza. Combats hepatitis. Combats all of the viral infections. Lyme disease is treated. Valley fever is treated. Chronic hepatitis is treated. Uh, and just when the body needs even a special antioxidant, lowering the level of germs in the body is a great advantage so that the immune system can do its other things and help protect the body. Now what we usually do after we do the 50 cc's of blood exchange, uh, and it's the patient's own blood and it's only out of their body for several minutes and it goes right back in, it's not exposed to the air, it's not exposed to any contaminating substances and the entire procedure is totally sterile. After we do this blood exchange, all right, well, here we are in our IV room, and I'd like to introduce you to Carmen Pena, who had surgery recently and has been recovering uh, fairly well because we've been doing these IVs to her, but we're actually going to give you an opportunity to witness one of her treatments. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we brought in our J.W. Meyer IV that we just mixed, and it's hanging up in the, in the IV bag, and we are about to do an ultraviolet blood radiation. This is a treatment that was made famous during World War II in Russia when they realized that they didn't have any antibiotics and one of the ways to kill germs and to oxygenate the body was to withdraw blood from the patient's arm mixed with a little anticoagulant and we use sodium citrate and the blood will go through this tube here pass that ultraviolet light into the syringe and then go right back into Carmen's arm and you'll see how how quickly and easily it goes 
and after we do that, we connect the IV. Now, you'll notice that Kathy will withdraw some of the blood and save it, and at the end of this, we're going to show you how we mix the autosanguis therapy, and then it, after we mix it, we'll show you how we give it back to Carmen. So let's go ahead now and have Kathy start the process, and maybe you could describe what you're doing. Well, I just am um, butterfly infusion tubing and, and attach the UV. Now watch what happens there. It's interesting what happens. Here is a 50 cc syringe that has sodium citrate primed in the tube and we're just pulling blood out of Carmen's arm with the tourniquet still on. It's going through the chamber and it's being radiated with the ultraviolet light. That ultraviolet light is a special process where the blood is being charged with energy and you'll see that it goes very quickly and you to try and fill that syringe as much as possible. How much do you pull back? About 40, but after you do this for some time, you can tell if a patient's blood is a little thick, it'll go slower. So you, ha you just have to go by feel as to how viscous their blood is. If you wait too long, the blood, even with an anticoagulant, will begin to uh, get thick and it'll be difficult to put it back in. So try to get 40. Uh, but if you can only get 20 and put it back in, it's better than not doing any at all. So. I mean, we have, uh, we've actually had the experience where we end up with blood in the syringe that won't go back in because we waited too long. Actually, what you can do with that, you actually then can inject that in the patient's buttocks, so you never waste any of that blood. It's usually not a problem here. It's usually a clot that forms in this small tubing or in the needle itself. But Carmen's got great veins, so I think this is, this is going real good right now. Then you just remove the tourniquet, when you're put, obviously, when you're putting the blood back in. And the blood actually then will go past the light a second time. It goes past the light on the way out, and it goes past the light on the way in. And you go by feel. Right, mm -hmm. it'll almost go in back in by itself with very little pressure. And the less pressure you apply, the better, because you don't want to damage the red blood cells. Breaking the red cells by pulling too hard or pushing too hard will, will light them and, and you won't have any effect from the UV then. Right, you want to keep the living red blood cells going. And there's many different ways of doing this procedure. Some doctors actually add ozone to the mix, and I was considering getting that, but when I went back to Germany where I bought this originally, and they said it adds 5%, and, and it's kind of messy to take the blood, run it through an ozone chamber, then bubble it, and, and you have all the risks of open blood in your, in your office. This is a closed system, and uh, I mean, clearly, the less exposure you have to blood in the open, the better off you are, and uh, to listen to the experts that we've gotten this from, and I actually bought this in Baden-Baden at Medical Week at a heel convention about seven or eight years ago. And, uh, and it's, it's been used very successfully since then. And the patients report feeling well, and we see the results. So this is, this is the way to go for a doctor's office. The IV sets are totally disposable, one-time use. And you can get them from the same manufacturer as the machine. All right, now you can see the blood's almost completely back in, and um, you're going to go all the way as, as much as you can to empty the needle all the way back in. And then when you get back to where it's just empty, we'll plug the IV into it, and Carmen will sit here for an hour. Of course, what we're going to do also is we're going to go out and mix the autosanguis therapy and come back and give it to her. Okay, simple as that. Mission accomplished.